The first step in analyzing this question is to take the given information and to try to translate it into a picture. For example, we know that these two trains are moving along a track, so they are moving in a one-dimensional direction. So what we've done is we've drawn a line down here and have indicated the two trains that are traveling along that line. We've called the first train, train A, and the second train, train B. Now if we look at the graph, we have two lines. We will call the solid line train A and then the dash line train B. You might notice that train A initially at time zero has a positive velocity. We can see right here that the velocity is along the positive y axis or the positive velocity axis. And therefore we have shown train A initially moving to the right. Train B on the other hand initially has a negative velocity since its initial velocity is along the negative y axis or the negative velocity axis. And therefore we have shown train B traveling to the left. Furthermore, we were told that the trains begin their motion 200 meters apart, and so we have labeled that distance between the trains accordingly. Now, one of the key concepts that will help us answer this question is to understand that for a velocity versus time graph, the area between two time limits will give us the change in position, which is also known as the displacement. So the key to understanding this question, again, is to note that on a velocity versus time graph, the area will give us the displacement of each train. So what we're going to do is go back to the picture and look at the graph, and we will begin with train A. And what we want to do is figure out the area underneath the graph for train A. So we will color that area in yellow here, and we're going to make it our goal to get that area, because again, that area will give us the displacement of train A. So we'll come on the side and make this calculation. Now the area underneath that graph would be the area of a triangle. So we can begin by writing down the formula for the area of a triangle, which is one half times the base of the triangle times its height. If we look carefully for the base of the triangle, we would need the measurement right here, and that stretches out to five seconds. And then for the height, that would be this length right here, if you will, and we were told that V sub S is equal to 40 meters per second. So that means that the height of this triangle is indeed 40 meters per second. Now, if we multiply this out, we can see that the area underneath the curve is going to be 100. And dimensionally, if you look carefully, you're multiplying seconds by meters per second. So if you take seconds and then multiply that by meters per second, the seconds are going to cancel out and that's going to leave you with meters, which indeed is the unit of displacement. So dimensionally, this quantity that we're calculating is consistent with our expectation that the area underneath the curve is the displacement. So what this means is that for train A, it's going to be moving to the right a displacement of 100 meters. Notice it's moving to the right because this area turned out to be positive. So what we can do is place train A right in the middle of this track, and this is its final position right here. We can notice from the graph that after those five seconds, the velocity is actually zero, so the train is no longer moving. Now, let's perform a similar area calculation for train B. So we're going to need to get the area underneath the graph or the curve or the straight line in this case for that train we have marked B. We will color it in green and we'll use the same formula for the area because once again it's a triangle, one half times the base times the height. Now looking carefully, the base of the green triangle is four seconds. So we will have one half times four seconds. Now the height, we need to be careful because we have to know how much velocity is represented by each individual increment. Again, up here, this was given as 40 meters per second. So that means that each increment must be 10 because we would then have 10, 20, 30, and then 40. So going down the negative velocity axis, we have negative 10, negative 20, and then negative 30. Notice we're saying that it's negative 30 meters per second because that velocity is measured along the negative velocity axis. Now, when we perform this calculation, we're going to get an area of negative 60 meters. Once again, the final dimension here is in meters. It is negative, so that means that train B is moving to the left, which we expected because of its initial velocity pointing to the left, but it's only going 60 meters, so it's not gonna quite reach the halfway point. 
it's only going to end up about you know, perhaps right here. This is not to scale, but close enough. So to summarize this displacement right here, this is negative 60 meters. We will just label it 60 meters for the sake of answering the question, as we will see. And then the displacement from here to here was 100 meters. What we are asked to find in the question is the separation when both trains have stopped. So in essence, we're looking for this little gap right here. This will tell us how far apart the trains are. If we wish, we can call that x just to give it a variable. And then hopefully we can see from the diagram that 100 plus x plus this 60, whoa, must equal the 200. So let's write that down again. The 100 meters plus the x plus the 60 has to equal the full distance originally between the trains, which was the 200 meters. Now this is a pretty simple equation. We have 160 plus x is equal to 200, and then we'll subtract 160 from both sides. We can see that this distance between the trains that we have marked x is 40 meters. So this gap right here will be 40 meters, and that is the correct answer to this question.